Within the 280 California State Parks units, full of one of the world's finest collections of natural, cultural, and recreational resources, it's our job at California State Parks to maintain, manage, and preserve those resources for future generations. Regarding the management of historic resources, we seek to maintain and repair. However, when replacement is necessary, we develop a plan consistent with the Secretary of the Interior Standards that utilizes matching designs, materials, and construction techniques that work to maintain the historic character of a particular resource. A recent project by restoration work specialist Tim White details this exact process. We're at Sutter's Fort State Historic Park in Sacramento, California and we're preparing to have the walls, trim, windows, and doors repainted. And we're finding that many of the windows need to be replaced. These windows have lasted over 100 years, suffering from weather, use, and a lack of maintenance to keep them in good shape for a long time to come. We're finding dry rot and the wood drying out and checking and debonding from the paint surface. Our goal is to remove them, store them properly, and build new reproductions as close to the originals as we can. When I'm making reproductions, I like to place them on a workbench so I can study their details, like historic wavy glass. I can take all the measurements I need and write them down so I can recreate this thing with as much accuracy as possible. On the left, I have a set of window sashes that are freshly completed, and on the right, I have a set that are ready to be assembled, showing all the pieces that we need to make. Here's the lower rail. Cut the length. Correct thickness with both our upper and lower profiles our end grain profile with our mortises. And for the upper rail, we're going to want to create the, the same kind of details. And here is the center mountain. Here's our floating tenon that we insert into the mortise and this connects our rails and styles together, like so. Boom. Our two center styles that meet together have a rabbit profile where they join. They also have both mortises and fit together like so. I have a stash of reclaimed lumber that's the same species as our original windows that's close to the thickness that we need. I start by taking the bulk of the waste off at the bandsaw. And next I take it to the wood planer so I can dial in our thickness with a nice machined surface. calipers don't lie, they tell us our thickness is perfect. The table saw allows us to get the width that we need. A router table with a high quality carbide tipped sash cutter set makes the job pretty easy. Cut it to length. When cutting the profile on the end grain, I like to make a nesting piece to eliminate tear out. Additional wood is to be removed at the center of the rails and the mountain. The easiest way I've found to do this 
is to use a square tipped carbide blade at the bandsaw and just gently create more cuts right up to the edge of the line. Clean it up with a really sharp chisel and it fits perfectly. You'll follow the same process for both the upper and lower rails and the muntins. To cut the mortises in the styles, I use a benchtop mortiser for a nice clean mortise. Clean up the inside edges with a really sharp chisel and it will make for a really good fit for the tenons. Mark the tenon placement on the rails like so, ensures a proper fit. Because of the length of the rails, I'm not able to use the bench top mortiser to cut the mortises. Instead, I use the drill press. I use a sharpie to create a line on the bit so I get the same depth of cut with every pass and take the bulk of the wood out. After drilling the holes, I square up the mortises using a chisel and create them so they fit just right in. Once all of the pieces are made, there's some things to take into consideration before assembly. To cut the glass, I mark the line where I want to cut it. I take this homemade T-square with cork that I put on the back to keep from scratching the glass. Line it up. Take my glass cutter. Score it. Carefully move it to the end of the table and snap. Our complete package of styles, rails, muntin, restoration glass, plugs, glazing points, our window glazing, our tenons in the two different sizes for the upper and for the lower. And now it's time to glue the bejesus out of it with tight bond 3 wood glue. Because the muntin is so narrow, to connect it to the style, I found that the use of a wood screw makes a perfectly strong joint. And I like to use a plug cutter set. The way I do that is I use a tapered drill bit that comes with the plug cutter set, drill it in the center, then I cut a plug, put the screw in, Glue the plug, insert it into the hole, give it a gentle tap. Once the glue has dried, take a flush cutting Japanese saw and cut off the remainder of the plug. And then it's ready for sanding and finishing. Once all of the pieces have been glued together, clamped, squared up and dried, then tenons cut off flush and everything sanded and finished out, you have a perfectly good working sash. You have your glass cut to fit with just enough room to the sides and to the length to allow for proper bedding in the window glazing we're ready to do our glazing. It's a good idea to put a coat of boiled linseed oil on the inside rabbits where the glazing goes. It bonds to the wood and to the glazing. Much more effective than the use of a primer. The next step is to back bed the glass. You take a ball of window glazing and you knead it to get an even consistency 
making it much more workable. You then roll it out into a long string and push it into the groove. Once that's complete, you take the glass and you gently place it in the opening. So you get ample squeeze out from the other side and it comes up the sides of the pieces of glass. You gently press on it and let it flow down nice and even putting pressure on, but not enough to break the glass. This sets it in the opening perfectly and allows an even amount of window glazing to get thoroughly around the edges of the glass. To secure the glass in place, take your window points and use the edge of your putty knife to push them into the edges. This will hold the pane of glass in place. Push gently to secure the flat edge up against the edge of the wood. Now you can take the sash, lift it up, take your putty knife, and clean off the stuff that squeezed out on the inside edge. Now we're ready to glaze the outside edge. Take a ball of glazing, knead it like before, roll it into a string, and push into that inside edge. Take your scraper, go across the top edge of the wood to get rid of the extra glazing. Makes the job a little bit smoother. Push the edges up against the wood to keep a nice tight seal. Take your scraper and create a 45 degree edge between the glass and the wood. Equal pressure on both sides and a nice 45 degree corner. And clean up your extra glazing without disturbing the surface. Then work your way around in the same way. And gently clean up your waist. Use your knife to make the corners nice and sharp and consistent. And now you have a completed window sash. And here you have a new window sash next to an old window sash. The old one really shows its age. While the new one looks similar in construction, but is in brand new condition. The results are pretty gratifying. With this project as an example, we can see that through using proper historic preservation techniques, which included a conditions assessment that identified where historic fabric can be retained, where it can be rehabilitated, and in some places where it needs to be reconstructed, 
through proper analysis and techniques, you can reconstruct elements of historic buildings that match the character and feel of the original.